What is art? Such a lofty question cannot simply be answered in terms of black and white. It is as subjective as its subject matter. But surely, though, there must be at least some criteria to classify what art is. In James Joyce's novel, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, Stephen Dedalus attempts to find out. To him, things like excrement, a child, or a louse lack the aesthetic arrest needed to be true art. This aesthetic is the artist's desire to highlight the essence of an object or idea's natural beauty and truth. It's pretty. But is it art? Art could subjectively be ugly and still be true to someone out there. As for the term true art, on top of sounding rather elitist, raises questions of its own. Is there such a thing as fake art if there's still beauty and intent behind it? Why not? Because while forgery is one thing, how about the question of a commercial product or a forced effort like the Shags? What about art created by computers? Thought of as a unique human endeavor, humans have created machines that can create art, such as music, paintings, and even plays. In fact, a computer-generated painting recently sold for around $432,000. But is it really true art? Perhaps this is why the Joycean definition of art is that of an authentic spiritual connection. The nature of art is ultimately fulfilled in an artist-to-audience relationship, regardless of whether or not a reaction is elicited. But what if people don't understand that language? Like this clip of a Brackage film. Or 433. Or even Picasso's Guernica. Even if you don't get its aesthetic, would it still not be considered art? But let's say we do play by the rules of James Joyce's game. What is an example that fits his definition of true art while still fulfilling our perspective? Pilot and Cockpit by H.R. Geiger is our example of true art. Initial impressions may suggest that Geiger's work fails to meet Joyce's requirements since the jarring and ominous images seem to provoke a reaction or desire from the audience. However, Geiger's work goes past that initial viewing. His nightmarish imagery and tone is a stylistic mark of his work and seems to reflect a subconscious dread and fear of sex. The Joycean wholeness of the piece revolves around this representation of a dark, uncanny, and otherworldly biological process. The aesthetic of Pilot and Cockpit brings forth some truths and arguments touched upon in other works of art, like Alien or Eraserhead. The concept of birth, creating another sentient being, can be overwhelming and even disgusting. The creation of life in other works is generally depicted with a lighter aesthetic, such as Sivinkov's The Origin of Life and Michelangelo's Creation of Adam. While these pieces glorify the creation of life, Pilot in Cockpit is rather obscene, but realistic in its depiction. The work vaguely suggests a biological process with its semi-phallic shapes and the body in the cockpit. While unsettling, the piece's intricate details are both disturbing and in our eyes oddly beautiful. And now with your permission, a bit of verse. This is a brief look at art by Elizabeth Curry. Whether a pharaoh's moving sideways, one eye apiece, or woven warriors swinging thread swords on warp and woof, human and dog, whether our glorious eyes are glass looking from blue and gold ceilings, we cannot see you as you see us.